thanks for being here today. I wanted to talk to you about a proposed rule about non-competes. Uh, I know it was mentioned in the State of the Union about non-competes with burger chains. I'm not sure that's a, a huge deal, but um, some small businesses are very concerned about the proposed rule in the sense of, you know, they want to be able to bring on new workers, they want to bring on and be able to train people into a new career and profession, but also do have the need to be able to protect their, their intellectual property, their business practices, and especially uh, non-solicitation in a sense of having someone come in, study the business, learn the business for five years, and then you know, go off, start their own, and call other customers uh, immediately. Now, we're all for fair competition in the marketplace, and if they want to build their own business and do whatever, but in, in the sense of using a business simply to, to abuse the privileges and everything you learn at that business to undermine the very business that, that taught you those things. So uh, could you speak to that and address those concerns? and how you'll take them into account. Yeah, we absolutely are interested in hearing from small businesses. Uh, our comment period on this proposed rule actually closed just last week, and we received around 26,000 comments, uh, including from small businesses. Uh, and so we're, we're keen to, to look closely at those comments and, and determine where to land. Interestingly, we've also heard from small businesses about the ways that non-competes can impede their ability to get talent and expand. So one thing that we've heard is that businesses that have been able to secure financing, that have been able to build factories, and are looking to enter markets that are quite concentrated, have ultimately realized that they're not able to access the necessary workers because those workers are all locked up through these non-competes. But isn't that a solution of the marketplace to, you know, if a business is having a problem finding workers, then it's behooven upon them to adjust their practices and how they address their own non-competes. It doesn't require a top-down approach to manipulate the market. If, so, that's, if that's the concern you're trying to address. So in instances where it's new businesses entering that don't currently have the workers with the relevant skill set, it's really in their competitors' interest to keep those workers locked up. And so I don't think we've seen the type of market response we would. One thing that our proposed rule asked was whether alternatives... Businesses will generally respond to their competitive interest. Uh, so it doesn't need the government intervening to help a business find its competitive edge. So one thing that we asked in the proposed rule is whether alternatives to non-competes like tailored non-disclosure agreements or trade secrets laws can help account for some of the concerns that you mentioned. And so that'll be one area where we'll be looking closely in the comment record. Okay, well, I, I urge you to be very careful. A lot of states also regulate this on their own. And as we know, in a federalist system, you know, it's best left to the states to manage what they can manage and then us to take on the rest. One other issue I wanted to talk about is the concern uh, broad concern among um, bipartisan on on data collection. Uh, specifically, you know, I was really concerned with COVID and the data collection on kids. Uh, and you know, many of the I remember trying to log on and I had data protection on my kids' computers and all those kind of privacy protections on my kids' computers and everything. And literally to log on to one of the educational apps, I had to type in a password 50 times just to get them into what they needed to do for the couple of weeks, you know, they were distance learning. Um, I'm curious as to what you're doing to look into these companies. A lot of these parental applications seem designed by lawyers, not really for the benefit of the kid or the parent, um, and what we can do to protect those kids. And, and also, I think one of the things when we talk about data privacy is we kind of assume that the data is owned by the collector as opposed to the person who's creating the data and whether or not this should be addressed as almost a property rights issue to where if you're creating the data, it's your data, it's your information as to whether or not uh, we should even not accept the premise of the question and whether or not we should look at this as more the individual has more rights in this space. Yeah, it's a really interesting question, and I think some of the proposals that Congress is considering to further boost protections in this area would, would hopefully address that. Um, for us at the FTC, we're working hard to protect children's data, including in the ed tech context that you mentioned. Uh, early in my tenure, we put out a policy statement putting ed tech providers on notice that they're not permitted, even under existing children's privacy law, to require that kids or their parents uh, surrender to endless data collection in order to use these critical technologies. Because I thought- well, And it's also just the pragmatics of, you know, as a parent, they almost get in the choice of, I get to try to sign on to this Byzantine process that protects the company and their lawyers and the company, the big tech 
company or software company can say, look, we have these protections, but they're so impractical to use that the parent is actually sitting there with their kid and like, okay, I either have to open this up so they can actually use this or I can't really practically use this tool. And that's kind of the choice sometimes parents seem to have. That's exactly what we've seen, and that's why we put ed tech providers on notice that even under existing law, uh, they can't require parents to just surrender to endless data collection because we saw absolutely, especially during the pandemic when overnight kids were having to use these apps to do their homework, those privacy concerns really went off the charts. Uh, we also recently brought a enforcement action against Epic Games uh, for engaging in practices that were really putting kids' data, uh, exposing kids' data and, and leading to all sorts of very troubling practices. So this is a big area of focus for us. Mr. Bishop. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, uh, Ms. Khan. Thank you for the courtesy call we had uh, uh, earlier uh, in the week. Uh, 